This is Rick Rule for Rule Investment Media, sponsors and producers of the Natural Resource Investment Symposium, held July 7 through 11 in Boca Raton, Florida, or via live, live stream from the comfort and convenience of your own home. However you choose to attend, understand that at the conference, we'll be presenting between 50 and 60 hours of high intensity, high value programming, more than you can absorb during the four days of the conference. To that end, we're interviewing every exhibitor and every speaker at the conference before the conference so that you could reach out to them before the conference, during the conference, and so that you can allocate your time at the conference much more efficiently. Note too, that uh, every exhibitor at the conference, every public company exhibitor is owned in accounts uh, owned or managed by myself. This constitutes a conflict of interest, but it's also your guarantee that unlike any other uh, natural resource investment symposium on the planet, every single exhibitor has been vetted by me personally. Uh, today's interview, or this interview, pardon me, uh, will be with Matt Granger, a friend of mine of very long standing, someone who I have invested alongside with for probably 20 years. Uh, Matt will be speaking today about an exhibitor, exhibitor Alpha Exploration, where I uh, am and remain a fairly large shareholder. Matt, first of all, thank you for your efforts on behalf of uh, exploration investors and speculators for two decades. Thank you too for your ongoing support of the Natural Resource Investment Symposium. It's a pleasure to have you on with us. Thank you, Rick. Very good to talk to you. And yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. I think it's the first time that Alpha has, uh, has been represented at the, the conference. So we're very much looking forward to it. Uh, give us an overview. Uh, of Alpha, what is it that you do? How are you how are you hoping to add uh, value for exploration investors? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we we're a um, Africa focused exploration company. We're particularly focused on the Arabian Nubian Shield, which, for your listeners that don't know, it's it's within the sort of the east northeastern part of Africa into the Middle East, and we consider that to be the, the last frontier in terms. Of making major discoveries so it's very prospective geology uh you know things are kind of sticking out the ground there it's a place you can go to make early early discoveries and, and potentially large-scale discoveries so alpha exploration is focused in the arabian nubian shield and the company has made uh, three significant discoveries in the last three years uh matt tell me something about the background of the people uh, in alpha exploration. Why should we care about your expertise around African exploration or, or the Nubian shield? Is there something in terms of the human resources in the company that would give us more comfort as to your ability to discharge the tasks at hand? Yeah, it's a very good, good, good question, Rick. Um, for my own personal background, I, I actually uh, invested in the company just over a year ago and I joined the team back in August. So recently joined alpha exploration. And I guess one of the key attractions for me was the team. And, uh, you know, people like Mike Hopley, who were involved with, uh, with Sunridge and there's Mara project in Eritrea, which was successfully sold. Uh, also John Clark, who's on the board of the company was the CEO at Nevson and really led that discovery of the Bisher project in 2002 to 2011, uh, you know, within production within nine years. And I recall the conversation you and I had back in August last year, when I just joined Alpha Exploration and I think Within the first two minutes, we we mentioned about the connection with Nevson. We'd mentioned that we we're in Arabian Nubian Shield, and as far as you were concerned, that part was covered. You were already very happy with those two elements, and certainly um, other people we've spoken to in the industry remember Nevson very well, in particular in the, the Bishop discovery, in terms of how successful you can be in Eritrea. You, you've also got Alistair Smith, who's a co-founder of the company. Alistair is very respected, involved with several discoveries in Africa, but in particular was involved with discovery of the Zara Gold project, which was eventually um, acquired um, and uh, by, went out to be a, a, big, a big success. So the, the management team has many years of expertise in Eritrea and also within the Nubian Shield, uh, three mines discovered and sold uh, in that period. So um, from my own personal perspective, that was a major criteria in terms of A, the investment, but also wanting to get involved with the company as I saw that management team could deliver uh, discoveries, which is what clearly what they're doing. 
so tell us something uh, about the value proposition. Tell us something about the three discoveries that you've made. Uh, tell us something about the target size that you believe that you're chasing and put that uh, in the context of both your market cap and your enterprise value. How much am I paying for this opportunity? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, to date, the, as I said, the company's made three discoveries uh, on, on, on the project. One of the things that attracted me was that one of them is a gold, um, originic gold system. One is a copper gold porphyry project and one is a VMS project. So that's quite unusual to find that within a company. Arguably, one of those projects, a junior company would be very happy with. This company has, has three. That is within one license. It's a 771 square kilometer license within our chair. It was formerly um, operated uh, by uh, Anglo, uh, Anglo Ashanti uh, back in uh, about 10 years ago, who spent $3.7 million on the license. So those three discoveries have been made. There are actually 17 other discoveries now as artisanal working. So you, in effect, you've got 20 projects, but three key projects. In terms of the value proposition, I guess the sort of flagship project at Burner is a major 7.2 by two kilometer system. The company is drilling there right now. We've, we've been drilling there the last couple of years. We've announced some, some really very, very good grades recently. Back at the end of February, just before PDAC, we announced uh, 18 meters of 15.33 grams per ton and 49 meters of 2.75 grams per ton. So that's within a, a, what we think is a major goal system. Uh, you've got seven kilometers of, of uh, mafic uh, sediments. You've got seven kilometers of granodiorite, which is a very similar host to Sakari, Sentiment Sakari mine. So that itself, we think is a big scale gold system. Separately, as I mentioned, there's Anagulu, which is a copper gold porphyry. The first hole that was drilled there was uh, 49 meters, just over two grams gold and over 1% copper. And we've delineated a two kilometer long system there with, uh, with, with high grades of copper, uh, some, some high grades of gold as well. And we think that also could be uh, a major discovery. Finally, as I mentioned, the Tolagimja, which is the VMS project, we have done some drilling there, intersected massive sulfide, intersected gossam and exolites, all, all the key things you need really to uh, look for a VMS discovery. We think that now may be a potentially six kilometer target, could even be potentially another Bisher. So that is another very, very decent discovery. So the market cap, we're about 90 uh, cents at the moment, 90 million shares out. So we're just under 80 million Canadian dollars. And we have about four and a half million dollars in the treasury. Uh, so, you know, we think we think we're, we're good value. I mean, really, as a junior company, we just need one discovery. A burn in, in particular has the potential to be a multi-million ounce discovery. And that's what we're going for. And we think if we can achieve that, then we can get a share price uh, quite a bit higher than we currently are. Some multiples higher than we are and create real value for our shareholders. We have the optionality in terms of the other projects to look at. Uh, joint venturing uh, or spinning out those assets. So we, we've got multiple attempts really here to be successful, multiple projects. We've got a very strong management team and we think it's a pretty unique proposition in terms of comparable uh, you know, junior exploration stories on the market. I guess one other thing to mention is in the last 12 months or so, we've raised just, just shy of 12 million Canadian dollars, which gives you an indication as to the appetite for, for Alpha in what has been, and you, you know better than I do, how, how difficult the market has been the last couple of years, perhaps the worst I've seen since I started my career 25 years ago. And yet this company has managed to raise that money. We've attracted shareholders, including Conwave and Crestcat, uh, US Global. And obviously we're delighted to have yourself participate as well. So we, we think we've got some good momentum and we've got a good opportunity now to turn one of these discoveries into a major discovery. Matt, briefly, let's drill down into this flagship pro uh, property. You used a bit of industry jargon <clears throat> that I want to simplify for our people. You talked about the analog being Sakura, uh, the, the Sunniman project, uh, and you talked about an orogenic gold system. Talk to us first about our orogenic gold systems uh, in shield terrains, and then talk about the size of the Sunniman deposit, given that that's your analog. Yeah, so the orogenic systems are, are very well understood. I think if you look uh, across you know, North America, Australia, and of course across Africa, a lot of the projects are these, these type of systems. So they're quite well understood in terms of the, of the grade. Typically, you know, these can be big systems as well, multi-million ounce discoveries, and there, there are many 
large orogenic gold projects across the world. So that that's that's fairly well understood. I think specifically in the case of Sukari, uh, Sukari uh, at the moment is about 11 million ounces. So it's a it's a, it's a major project. It's a, a granodiorite type host, and of course, being in Egypt, it's part of the Arabian Nubian Shield. So it's identical rocks to what we have in uh, in Eritrea. So as I mentioned earlier, we the focus so far has been on the the sediments, the mafic sediments within the project, which are uh, seven kilometers in strike. But actually, some of the early work that was done, and, and if you look at the um, the historic areas of artisanal mining by the Italians about 100 years ago, it's within the granodiorite. Some drilling that was done by Alpha uh, a couple of years ago, we, we had 10 meters at five grams per ton within this unit. So uh, we've, we've really done very little work on that at the moment. Uh, it's another seven kilometers of strike. Uh, one of the things we're doing just now is we're looking to bring uh, an additional rig in, so a RAB rig. So whilst we continue to drill out the main mineralized part of the burner, we are also going to be using the RAB rig to test additional uh, high grade structures within within the deposit. Uh, and briefly, the other analog that you mentioned is Bisha. Could you tell us something about that target size so that people get an idea of the scope and scale of your exploration targets? Yeah, so, so Bisha, as I said, said was discovered in 2002. So got into production within nine years, which is was pretty unusual um, for the for the industry and certainly uh, a, a good uh, case point really for uh, Eritrea. It's a um, volcanogenic massive, massive sulfide project, VMS project. So it coppers in gold. Um, the key thing with Bisha is that in the upper part, the top part was was high grade gold within the oxide. So it generated a lot of cash flow very, very quickly. Um, you know, that 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 went on to become a, uh, you know, the, the, the Eritrean Eritre government there um, paid for their 30% ownership, so $253 million. And the proceeds from Bisha, from Eritrea, were used to fund the acquisition of, of reservoir minerals, uh, which is Timok, and the eventual sale to, to uh, a Chinese group to Zinjin uh, about six years ago for $1.8 billion. So really all of that came on the back of that one VMS project um, in, uh, in Eritrea. To the extent that our audience wants to learn more uh, about Alpha, and we do have an exploration-centric audience, uh, who do they contact and how specifically do they contact that person? Yeah, so the, the best person to contact would be myself. Um, I will be at the conference with my, my colleague. So they can contact me through uh, Matthew at alpha-exploration.com and also go to our website, which is alphaexploration.com. So very happy to, to field those calls and delighted to meet um, potential investors at the conference in July. Matt, thank you for two decades uh, of toil on behalf of exploration investors, including myself. And thank you too for your ongoing support and sponsorship of the Natural Resources Investment Symposium. I look forward to hosting you in Boca Raton. Thank you, Rick. Thanks so much for your time and uh, delighted to see you uh, in, in July. Thank you.